we will move ahead as regards our study of acids and bases is concerned. What happens to an acid or a base in a water solution? What happens to an acid or base in a water solution? What's the relationship between an acid and water, a base and water? Here we have an experiment. We won't perform the experiment, we'll just discuss it. In a test tube, we have taken sodium chloride, sodium chloride powder. Test tube should be dry, absolutely dry. We have taken sodium chloride powder. It's in solid form. To that, you add a drop of concentrated sulfuric acid. You should be very careful while handling concentrated acid. How can you add? You use a dropper. Use a dropper. Take one drop of concentrated sulfuric acid and add it to sodium chloride. Just one drop. It's enough. Here I show the drop. It is concentrated acid, not dilute acid. It falls on sodium chloride powder and there will be a quick reaction. Now the reaction is between an acid and the base, acid and the base. What are the products we get? We get salt. We get salt. Let's see now. See, hydrogen chloride gas has got liberated here. NaCl plus H2SO4. You will get HCl and any 2 so HCl gas gets liberated. I show fumes here. As soon as you put a drop of concentrated acid, keep this ready. A bent tube, it has passed through a cork, a rubber cork, which can fit in well into the test tube. Immediately put a drop of acid, immediately put the cork. So when the gas liberated comes out through the delivery tube, a small L-shaped delivery tube. Here, where the gas comes out, you hold a moist blue litmus paper. Moist blue litmus paper. First of all, instead of moist, you can have a dry paper, a dry blue litmus paper. Hold it. See whether there is a change in color. You may not find any change in color. Then dip that litmus paper, blue litmus paper, in water and hold that here. I have shown here moist litmus paper. If you hold here dry litmus paper, you do not see any change in color. But the moment you hold a moist litmus paper, it is blue in color. Blue litmus paper. Moist. It is specifically right. Moist blue litmus paper. It turns into red. The hydrogen chloride gas, it is acidic. It needs water. There is no water available here. This experiment may be on a wet day. On a rainy day, in case you conduct the experiment, there will be a lot of moisture in the air. It may fail even. I just give you a warning. So it should be a dry day. A dry day. Now, 
a CL gas that comes out reacts with the moist blue liquid paper and turns it into red. HCl liberated turns blue liquid paper into red. I have added a cross there. Only if it is moist. If you hold dry paper, dry liquid paper, no change. If it is moist, there is a change. You can very well make out. The moisture in the paper has worked out a miracle. That has worked out a miracle. See here, hydrogen ions get produced only in the presence of water. Water is very much required. Otherwise, you won't have acid there. You will have only hydrogen chloride gas. Hydrogen chloride is in the gaseous form. The moment you brought a moist paper there, hydrogen chloride gas which was in gaseous state turned into liquid state. It became acid in liquid state and that acted. Hydrogen ions, there are hydrogen ions there in HCl gas, they get separated get produced only in the presence of water. See here, HCl, hydrogen chloride, same what you write as HCl can be hydrochloric acid too. That's why we usually write, if we are to be very specific, HCl in bracket you can write it as G. You can write it G in gas state, gaseous state, plus H2O. You get here, a special molecule called as hydronium H-Y-D-R-O-N-I-U-M hydronium H-3-O H-3-O plus Cl Cl minus here HCl got divided into H and Cl H got added up to H2O. So this became each and every water molecule there started turning into H3O hydronium. So water molecules turned into hydronium molecules. See here H plus it is an aqueous condition. In aqueous condition, H plus plus H2O, it is H3O. The presence of water has made the difference. Hydrogen ions from hydrogen chloride, they join the water molecules and we had hydronium molecules. They are positive. See here, in basis what happens? This is what happens in acids. In basis, NaOH, sodium hydroxide, it is in solid state here, solid state. When it gets moisture, H2O, you have Na positive, aqueous plus OH minus in aqueous state. Now, H, what you have got here, H positive, it joins with OH, hydroxyl ions, hydroxide or hydroxide ions and that becomes water. H2O. This is what happens in basis. So what does this say? An acid, it becomes very reactive when water molecules get added. This is the reason why we should not add water to an acid. You have acid in the mouth, concentrated acid. Bring a glass of water and 
pour it into that there will be huge effervescence and explosion you should never do it we never add water to concentrated hydrochloric acid or sulfuric acid or nitric acid in order to dilute it what should we do then take water in a bowl and concentrated acid should be added to that water in small quantities very small quantities don't drink the bottle straight away never in small quantities you get the concentrated acid and add it to the water that you have in the bowl you get the reason here concentrated acid will be very active in the presence of water quick reaction will take place it has happened in many labs where attendants or people who act they do not know the reason as to what, why all this happened or they don't have the needed education such explosions can very well happen and this can even be asked as a question in the examination why should we not add water to concentrated acid ok to conclude to dilute an, a concentrated acid you have to add the acid little by little to water with constant stirring you will be able to make the concentrated acid dilute to the required level all right now once again with whatever information we have got discussion we had let us find out the differences between acids and bases these basic aspects should be very very clear and distinct in your minds acids versus bases acids have a sour taste bases have a bitter taste i have given the example of lemon here and soap here while taking bath you would have tasted soap acids will have burning or prickling sensation when acid falls on you even dilute acid for the matter you get this burning sensation slightly and prickling sensation but bases do not give that much of sensation but you feel slippery you feel uncomfortable with soap solution in the hand you want to cleanse it well you feel slippery when it comes to the ph hydrogen potential it is less than 7 less than 7 we will be discussing after this chart this part but in the cases of bases it's always more than 7 most of the food items we can consume food items we consume they are all acidic in nature most of the cleansing items cleaning items we use in the house in the kitchen maybe in the bathroom outside they are all bases all cleansing toilet toiletries there you find most of the solutions you use they are all bases acids turn blue litmus into red whereas bases turn red litmus into blue let's see the examples here milk milk we always consider as an acid milk won't remain in its normal state for a long time immediately it starts slowly getting converted into an acid and ultimately what we get is butter milk then citric acid from lemons 
Here you have Pepsi. Pepsi is an acid. Those who have acidity in the stomach should not drink Pepsi. Should not drink these juices available in the market. They are all acidic in nature. Then you have tea or coffee. Here you have vinegar, acetic acid. Vinegar, it is an acid. Its chemical name is acetic acid. CA3COOH. Then you have HCL. In our stomach, we have hydrochloric acid. It is quite concentrated. It can kill the gems in the food we are taking. All the gems they do get killed. It helps in digestion too. So we have an acid all the time in our stomach. There is the hydrochloric acid. Even when you feel hungry, you didn't have proper food. You feel a disturbing situation in your stomach. Mainly because of the SCL that is getting produced. Every day you have your food at 1 o'clock and one day you miss it. At 1 o'clock you will have a sort of disturbing situation in the stomach. Says, come on, have food. Have something, at least a glass of water then. If you have a glass of water, the concentrated acid there will get diluted and for the time being things make tolerance. Uh, here, tamarind, tartaric acid, tamarind. Then here you have sulfuric acid <coughs> in the lab. It's being poured into beaker, dilute sulfuric acid. Then tomatoes, tomatoes are acidic. Most of the food items we take in, they are all acidic. Then here you have cherries, cherries, they too are acidic. Maybe the level may slightly move upwards or downwards. Let's come to the bases now. See here, you have a fertilizer bag, a bag of a fertilizer. You have brought it for your feed. Fertilizer is a base, not acid. Base. Then egg yolk, egg white. Egg white is a base. Colgate, the toothpaste we use, it's a base. We never use an acid to clean our mouth. Acids are there in the food itself. That's why after you consume any food, the best thing is to gargle. If you don't gargle, a small percentage of that acid will remain in your mouth. So gargle your mouth well, so it returns to normality. And the toothpaste you use, it is a base. So any acid that is left over there, or even the collected material of the food that is there over the teeth, they all get cleared by the Colgate toothpaste and you will brush it. This is why we stress a lot. Before you go to bed, you should have the habit of getting your teeth brushed, mouth cleansed with Colgate or any other toothpaste, any other good toothpaste. Then you have the milk of magnesia. When you are totally disturbed, you are an acidic stomach. You are not in a position to do anything. It's a situation is terrible. And a spoon or two spoons of milk of magnesia will bring the situation to normalcy. Apple. Apple is a base. Apple. Okay. Then you have harpic. Harpic is used to clean the toilet. It's a base. That's why you put harpic and clean the toilet. It starts shining. It becomes clean. Then you have soap. Baking soda. Baking soda is a base. Baking soda. Sodium bicarbonate. Sodium bicarbonate. Washing soda is also a base. Sodium carbonate. Then here you have the ammonia. 
ammonia in the bottle, you mix three. Borax. Borax is also a base. Boric powder, borax. Then you have bleach, bleaching powder. Bleaching powder. Here you have chalk pieces. He used to write to the blackboard. Chalk pieces. These are all bases. If you know quite a few examples, your understanding of bases or acids will be of a much higher level. This will be safe. When you study, don't study just from examination point of view. Study from knowledge point of view. Automatically you get benefited. They all stand as a support to you when you start writing your answers. You don't get confused. Acids react with bases to give salt and water. Now we will continue with the differences. Acids give hydrogen ions H plus in water. But bases give hydroxyl ions OH plus in water. Water is a need. It can't be dry. Water is required there. Turns methyl orange to red. Methyl orange is orange in color. The name itself says methyl orange. Or from orange it turns to red in the presence of acids. Here methyl orange turns to yellow in the presence of bases. Then below the lane, it is colorless in the acid medium. Below the lane is all, already colorless. In the presence of acids, there won't be any change, it will remain colorless. But if you add a base, you know the lane turns to pink. The other day we had done that experiment. How strong are acid solutions and base solutions? Acid solutions turn to be very strong when H plus ions or hydrogen ions are more and more in number. Alkaline solutions turn to be strong when hydroxyl ions go on increasing. Look here, how strong are acid and base solutions? Strong acids have more hydrogen ions. For example, battery acid. It's very strong. More H plus ions. Strong bases have more OH minus ions. Say sodium hydroxide. Concentrated sodium hydroxide. It will have more OH minus ions. Hence, scientists have come out with a pH scale. P, small p, capital H. pH scale. It is actually from German language. P stands for potential there. We can say power, meaning is power. H. Hydrogen. Power of hydrogen. How are hydrogen ions there? P scale measures hydrogen ion concentration in a solution. P stands for power of hydrogen. How strong the concentration of hydrogen ions are based on that we say. P scale measures from 0 to 14. See the range on the P scale is from 0 to 14. The lowest number is 0. The highest number on the other side is 14. 0 to 14. All the figures have to be arranged on the scale of 0 to 14. 0 means highly acidic, very acidic. 14 means very alkaline, highly alkaline. Our body works within the pH range 7 to 7.8. Neither it is towards the alkaline end nor towards the acidic end. It stays somewhere in between 7 to 7.8. 7, 7 is normal. So our body is slightly alkaline. Slightly alkaline. Acid rain. We'll take another example. 
example, acid rain. We speak of acid rain. Usually, first one or two rains turn to be acid rains in industrial areas. It depends. Here, pH of less than 5.6. If the pH is less than 5.6, then it is called as acid rain. It is acidic in nature. You look at this figure. Here we have made a box and these two ends have been linked. Here zero, I told you the lowest figure here. Highest figure is 14, 7 is not. From this center garden, you see this triangle goes on decreasing. That is H plus ions. Here on this side, OH ions. H ions go on decreasing as it moves towards 14. OH ions start going on increasing. So I have shown the arrow mark here. Increase in H plus ions. Concentration. Increase in OH minus ions concentration of ion concentration. So this one figure makes it very evident and very clear. Even to explain in the examination, if you remember this figure, we can write very well. Okay, life cannot exist on a plan on planet Venus. We can go to Mars. Somehow we can manage. But we cannot go to Venus. The reason is that Venus is covered by clouds of sulfuric acid. Sulfurous huge. See, fumes are covering planet Venus. They say the pH is very low. We cannot survive on Venus for that reason. Stomach acid produces HCl acid. Very interesting fact. We have a chamber in our digestive system where prominently we have Hydrochloric acid, we call it stomach acid, we even say digestive juice, it's a part of the digestive juice. Why is it required to kill the germs or to enable the right kind of digestion to take place, all these are there. It has a lot of plus points, we do require, we do, do require the hydrochloric acid in our stomach. So, stomach acid produces hydrochloric acid. It has. Now here, sometimes we feel acidic. Too much of irritation. Burning sensation in the stomach. We find it difficult to manage. In such cases, doctors prescribe antacids. We can take antacids. Antacids are taken to bring down the problem of acidity. We should remember this. Which is the best antacid available in the market that we can have? You don't need even doctor's prescription. That is milk of magnesia. Or magnesium hydroxide. Chemically if you want to pronounce it. Milk of magnesia we call a spoon or two of milk of magnesia will bring the situation under control. Milk of magnesia is a good example for an antacid. So when you have a problem with the stomach where acidity gives you that burning sensation, better you have antacid. antacid. Then tooth decay starts if the pill 
if the pH of the mouth falls below 5.5 mouth has acids for the reason we keep biting and churning food in between the two jaws and then we swallow and we have even the saliva that gets released by the salivary glands partly the food begins its digestion process in the mouth itself some reactions do take place and particles remain in the mouth even after we eat so what should we do we should gargle it with water once or twice to see that all the particles go away if we can brush the teeth it's very good as you go to bed in the night it's a must that you brush your teeth with the toothpaste keep your mouth clean for the next 8 hours you are on bed the mouth should be very clean that helps you a lot but the particles of food if they remain what happens acids get produced acids there will be acidity in the mouth and this acidity will start corroding the enamel of the teeth the teeth have the hardest substance covering them the hardest substance in our body is the tooth enamel tooth enamel is made of a chemical calcium phosphate calcium phosphate by anything the enamel will not get disturbed even if we start to take a sharp object and try to write on the tooth it won't uh, make any mark there because the substance covering the teeth is very high but continuous acidity in the mouth will definitely corrode calcium phosphate that is the enamel of the teeth what happens next that's what you call corrosion corrosion starts the teeth they will have their death knell so tooth decay starts if the ph of the mouth falls below 5.5 you should take care that it doesn't go below 5.5 tooth enamel corrodes in such a state in such a condition where the ph value is below 5.5 tooth corrosion starts okay treat beasting whenever you are beasting what is the treatment you require beasting will inject acid into your body you have to treat it with baking soda acid plus base is salt and water it gives you salt and water so immediately go for baking soda don't think of anything else and immediately put baking soda over that and just uh, rub it then last one here stinging hairs of nettle leaves see if you go to the garden and outside in the lawns people even point out and tell don't tell those plants don't tell the leaves don't remove them and try to enjoy no because nettle leaves have glands in their outer cover which will have acids they contain acids stinging hairs of nettle leaves contain it is an acid which is called as methanoic acid methanoic acid you get a itching sensation and you are wondering as to why you went and took that plant in your hand so these grow in the wild you should be careful about them nettle leaves they when you take them in the hand and you rub or you play with them the methanoic acid enters in and that creates a lot of disturbance so all this relate to ph ph aspect now children we have a beautiful representation of psk in the form of a chart here to find out psk the ph value we use small slips of paper which have been treated with the needed indicators those i will show you in the next period as to how we use them i will have the experiments displayed here 
you have the P scale, please pay attention. See, this is the scale. When the indicator, that slip, that paper slip, strip, if you immerse it in the solution, you do get one of these colors. Any one shade of these colors. So you have to compare, match and find out as to what the value is. Say here this red color depicts zero. pH value is zero. One, two, three. Now here is normal. Seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen. It's the highest. Acidic here, alkaline here. So lower the value, it is highly acidic. Higher the value, it is alkaline. Now let's see a few. What is zero? Battery acid is the example. One, lemon. Lemon juice is the example for two. One is stomach acid. One is stomach acid. Two is lemon juice. Three is vinegar, acetic acid, 4, you have bananas, 5, black coffee, 6, milk, 7 is neutral. They are logarithmic values. <coughs> On the other side, 8, our blood pH value is roughly 8. 9 egg white. 9 is egg white. See the shape goes on changing. 10 is the bleach what we use in the house. Household bleach. 11 is same color, background color here. 11. It is household ammonia. Ammonia we use for cleaning. 12. It is the hair remover. When you apply the hair remover, you will have irritating sense. You will have burning sensation. Then 13 is oven cleaner. 13 is oven clear, cleaner. And 14 is drain cleaner. Say, heartbeat kind of such items what you get in the market. They are all examples for drain cleaners. So all these substances depending on H plus concentration or OH minus concentration, they are spread on the 0 to 14 scale. I hope you understood. I will have one or two experiments in the next period. We will try to measure the pH value of substances before we proceed forth. Thank you.